Okay, it was hot. I ate it. <laughs> so, after the early bird had breakfast at 7, that means that uh, when we would be here alone, probably the breakfast would stop at 8, because they know that we are not the early birds, but because there, there was somebody else who had some kind of a training here, professional training, they sort of start serving sort of breakfast at 7 and if you are so, okay, very happy. That's right! <laughs> Nobody would tell you, go, just sit at the other side of the of the room. And that's an actually an important insight. All right, so I'm going to get my, because I'm going to stay today, you understand? I, I, I'm not going to stay because I'm also a student of yours. Uh, always welcome to yeah, stay. Uh, uh, yes, me and Jeff is going to take your thing and go, oh, look, there is a, there's a spot here, there's a seat. So, and, um, let me just, here's the last question. Um, I know that you came from different faculties, that are through those through that and sociology students, political science, also philosophy, and some of you are from literature. So I choose a topic which suits all these faculties. Because when I speak of prejudices, I speak also about the problems of law legislation, for example, hate speech, whether they should be punishable or not punishable by law. When I speak about prejudice, I speak about literature. I speak about Shakespeare, what is natural, what is natural, not natural, Romeo and Juliet, of course, the Merchant of Venice, and Otello, obviously, respectively. We speak about literature, Lessing, uh, Ibsen, Snora, about women, etc. We speak about literature. We speak also about sociology, because you can give a, a social description, empirical or less empirical, of the development of prejudices in one or the other country of Europe or in America or in Asia or in Africa, whatever you choose. It depends on the subject matter. You can do it a little bit also anthropology, because at least contemporary anthropology speaks anthropologically also about certain groups use culture and, and ethnic cultures, etc., etc. You can speak about ethnic prejudices, religious prejudices, race prejudices, and of course, class prejudices in different social settings, in democracies, first in pre-modern societies, also in totalitarian countries. That's why I give you as a reading from Arendt's book on origins of totalitarianism. So you can speak about philosophy, philosophical prejudices, that's why I offered to Nietzsche, but not only the book, uh, little book I offered from Nietzsche, but also the, the, um, his piece about how the other world became, became a story, became a, a narrative, etc., as a favor. That's the English translation, how it became a favor. You can also speak when a metaphysics is a prejudice. Nowadays, we are in the post-metaphysical phase of philosophy and development, so you can ask the question whether metaphysics was a prejudice proceed from our own eye, but is a prejudice. Anyway, and if you are philosophers, you can speak about the history of prejudices, the relationship of modernity and prejudice, and first and foremost about the general and the particular concept of prejudice. The general prejudice you have studied Kadama, I think, because I gave you a reading, we start anyway with this concept of prejudice, and later on with the particular concept of prejudice, which is basically negative prejudice, something wrong in the general conception is not something wrong, but something which is all the time with us, he cannot get rid of it because it belongs to us as social beings. So we, we discuss different concepts of prejudices. And we discuss also the different relationship of prejudices to judgment, to so-called determinate judgment, as this is a general concept, and the single case we determine on the ground of the general judgment, general concept, or the reflective judgment you get from a empirical observation and you generalize or over generalize this empirical observation. One court's book on prejudices also suggested for you to read and uh, gives you a lot of 
a lot of examples, too many examples in my say examples are overwhelming in this world. But uh, besides overwhelming a number of examples, there are also the theoretical aspect that um, other generations, for example, means in the development and and the uh, acceptance of prejudices. So let's start from the beginning. But before I start, I will tell you that my project. First, I'll give you a theoretical introduction, and after each and every class of mine, when I give a little talk, you can not just ask questions, you can also discuss matters, which I develop in my class. Afterwards, I also want, in the second uh, week, some of you, those who volunteer for it, to give a little talk about certain aspects of prejudices. The little talk can be also a preliminary, a preliminary, uh, give a preliminary idea, preliminary concept of the paper you are going to produce after you have left this place. So a person is interested in literature, she can give a little talk about prejudices in Othello or Rachel from Venice or what are suggested in lessons, um, um, not the not and that's religious prejudice or in Ibsen Snor and Prejudice Against Women, or any other works of literature which you particularly uh, like from the position of the presentation of Bandung and the Prejudice, if you are in literature. If you are in law, then you can say, I'm here that example, you can speak about heat speech, you can speak about um, a legislation, but that there is a conflict between free speech on the one hand and legislation against against hate speech, for example, or racial, um, racial jokes, for example. Well, uh, these are contradict each other, or you can find a compromise between the two. This is good for liberal students. Social education, I uh, rather suggest they can be some, uh, some um, uh, idea about prejudices in their own country which they can um, refer to empirically, but you can also give a more theoretical aspect. I told you about philosophy, what you can do there, and mm -hmm. in anthropology as well. So please, uh, sit it over, and tomorrow in the morning, you give me a piece of paper, your name, and which kind of topic you choose for a small presentation, just during the second day, and this more after this more presentation, everyone, the whole class, will discuss the presentation. So basically, the students who do the presentation, they have a, some type of a more concrete idea. That's what we will develop later on in the paper. So because it's good to have a critical, critical remarks from your peers and find out what you left off, what you could have uh, added to it, and so on and so forth, and some get some new ideas from the others. So that's about the procedure. Now I start with the talk. My talk starts with the obvious. You know, you have Yadana, Yadana for prejudices from Cruz and Metro. You perhaps know Yadana was a student or at least a disciple of Martin Heidegger, and he was also the most um, exquisite representative of modern. Hermeneutics, at this hermeneutics, hermeneutics is not entirely new. It has to do with the uh, with the previous distinction between explanation and understanding. That is, understanding something is totally different from explaining something. Explanation is an explanation through cause and effect relationship. Explain, you explain why we are here explain what kind of thing you have read on the internet and when yes, you have read in the internet and see this course on the internet was the course, we love the course and there are many courses who are interested in education, then there's a new school, whatever, but the course of it up to our game. Understanding something different, I want to understand what's going on the mind, to your mind, what you mean by being here, what you mean when you say something, but, but anything about this word uh, or us here together, what is the meaning of it? 
but it's a kind of meaning uh, which is not a Gadamer's in uh, uh, discovery. But Gadamer was interested basically how we understand, how we understand virtues, conceptions, stories, things that happened not with us, but with other people. How do you understand, for example, Socrates? How do you understand a Greek word in general? How do you understand a, a medieval painting? And this thing that you have, in a way, you have to place yourself in the position of the other. And you, you have to mediate the contemporary world, the contemporary understanding of things, and the understanding of the things in this very work of art or, or philosophy or, or relationship which you want to understand. So when he speaks about the fusion of horizons, that the fusion of horizons of the contemporary world to the world which was gone. Now, I don't speak about this theory. I have very serious problems with it. I think that the fusion of horizons will never ever happen. But this is another matter I wanted to tell you why the prejudices are so important for government's work. Because very deep prejudices in the general understanding, he elaborates this also inside in his hermeneutical project of his day of understanding. Now, his, uh, as he read it, his understanding of prejudices starts with the criticism of the Enlightenment concept of prejudices. And Enlightenment uh, developed a concept of prejudice which was entirely negative. Everything which was not tested by reason or not contrasted to a clinical experience of the civil individual was considered to be a prejudice in a negative sense. But this is the terms of enlightenment of Voyager was one of the most important character, but also leader of others, that to do that is not tested by reason and a statement or regarding we have tested the rationality. Uh, we have all been tested with empirical and with your own personal individual experience is very, very prejudiced. But everything needs to be tested at the judgment before we accept the judgment. We need to test the judgment because not, we cannot accept the judgment as true or right or correct just while people say so. Because people may say many things, and in this kind of judgment, we could, I think, uh, test them before the tribunal of reason, that's a good air expression, the tribunal of reason, or by empirical experience. By either or, because in philosophy, the two have uh, two ways of, um, I would say, rejecting prejudices, became then later on a little bit different, that was an empirical uh, kind of understanding the world in which prejudices were rejected because they could not um, could not be uh, um, ready to accept the test of empirical experiencing and the other kind of philosophy was basically based on really rational rational argumentation, rational testing what is right and what is wrong. So Douglas position is the following that we can all prejudices Prejudice is a normal thing. We cannot live without preliminary statement. We cannot live without accepting sentences, judgment, before and without being tested by reason or without test being tested by personal experience. The conception starts with an idea of Heidegger, which was also an idea to be called Heidegger. The concept of being small, that is the world we have, we are German among you. That is, when we are born, we are thrown into the world. We are thrown into a concrete world, thrown. That means that, that we are born, you, you, you are born, exactly in the world which you were born, which state, which family, which culture, yeah, the total accident. That is your birth is accidental, not just because the birth itself is accidental, and the, 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 the 
a relationship between the skirt and the egg is also accidental. But when you are already born, it's so into a complicated and very accidental. That is an accident. What happens this slowest accident? Private uh, person, we are slow into a bird. Subject uh, we are slow into freedom. Um, when I say we are slow into freedom, I say the same, but a little bit more. Because when I say not, I'm slow into bird, but I'm slow into freedom, that I really accept the conception of the Bible. I am thrown into a situation that I can choose between good and evil, and I can choose myself as well. That is, I choose, uh, uh, thrown but essentially, the thrownness is the same. We are thrown by accident into a complete world. What does it mean? Now, what is wrong? What is to be wrong? I, on my part, uh, speak about a so called genetic aid priority. You know, philosophers know what a priori means. A priori means it's prior to an experience. Yeah? Okay? When you are born, just come about in the womb of the mother, you have to get experience anything from the world. You have no experience. You are just so into this world. By the way, what does the word world mean? What is a word? No. No. In some, in some languages, in the world is expressed, I don't know about new languages. You are, you are, you come into the world, yeah? I don't know about what you will say, you are, uh, uh, in the right point, says the German, the Hungarian says the same, you come into the world. Not to say you come into the world. And then you are leaving the world. What is then the world? What is the world then? What is the world? What is, what is, how do you understand what the world is? You, you come into the world means simply the world. We are thrown into the environment. And then this environment is narrow or broader, but belongs to this environment. But anyway, you are coming as a stranger, as a stranger, as an alien. You have seen many things about aliens. Now we are the aliens. Then we are thrown into the world, which is totally strange at us. We don't understand a thing of this world. We are thrown into it. And that the world is more or we that we don't understand anything because we have not yet experiences from this world. Now, when we are born, we start experiencing. But what do we experience? We are confronted with a system, a system of norms and rules and with things. To refer again to a Heideggerian conception, we are confronted with things at hand. And this to Hunter. And the uh, things which are just there, that for Hunter. Things are just there. Bust are just there. Norms, rules, native language is just there. It is there. When you are thrown into a world, you are confronted with native language, you are confronted with places, you are confronted with voices, you are confronted with environment, you and slowly, slowly you are confronted but single things with the new people, we are also confronted uh, with what you are taught. That is not just language, but a rich understanding something. They have to tell you a uh, reason that you are confronted, and the whole first experience is, of course, you accept everything that you are taught. What other things do you do? Your first experience is experience with a world outside you. And this word outside you are called social environment. So I think when you are when you are born so in the world as a complete stranger, you are as a genetic environment, you are confronted with a social environment. And then you start to live what you need, what it means, you start to make experiences, experiences, in this world, experiences from the world which surrounds you, you cannot have other experiences, and you cannot really pass up. How can you possibly pass? We are, and you say, because you have, no, you have no idea what the world is all about, in which you are born. So you are, have to accept, but you are told, you have to accept the prejudices of your world, because without acceptance, you cannot grow up, you will die, you will not be 
able to survive in your environment. The condition of your survival is that you accept the, the prejudices of people, you start to act on the ground of these prejudices. Prejudices, I mean, I mean, come back to the concept. You are confronted with norms and rules and opinions and values which are not tested by your reason, neither they are tested by your personal experience. What are the aspects of the genetic and the social environment? Now, what is in the genetic area? I don't want to be genes. But there is a problem. That's a program. We are from program for social experience. You are very problem for social experience. You are you know from Chomsky, of course, you are programmed to learn a language, not any language, but learn any language, learn any language. We are programmed for learning language. And, uh, according to Charlie Chomsky, this is why my children learn so fast. A language from other tongue because your brain is programmed for learning. The brain, your brain is programmed for, abs for abstractions. The brain is programmed for symbolic presentation, to understand symbolic presentation. And the, you, uh, your brain is programmed also for many different things in different degrees. So not everyone is born with a brain which uh, may be possible to become a Mozart or become a Rembrandt, or become an Einstein, at least there are certain programs in your brain, in your brain, which may, which are the conditions, and conditions to become this or that, or someone, or a prophet, or whatever you wish, but there are only conditions. The conditions are excellent conditions, because this is just the relative yet right Now that was one of the time of philosophy, of the of his kids, John Locke was his name. He said that we are born with total, a totally uh, empty, empty, empty board, a school board in our mind, and, and which is he called Tabula Rasa. Tabula Rasa is totally empty. That we, no one has any preconditions in his mind. Everything comes from experience. Experience from all sciences, the right sciences from the brain. That is the uh, 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 external or the rights of something from the brain, that is nothing, and that is there is nothing in the intellect itself which can be previously in the senses. That is nothing is in our intellect which has been previously in our senses. Sensual experience is the writing. That the writing, the text comes from the brain. Like, like this other philosopher we heard about, we did not mention his name. I like this book, a very long book on Bob, and uh, criticized him also for this aspect because he said nothing is in our intellect which has been previously in our experience except the intellect itself. That's a very important thing because he was the first to uh, formulate a sense which was philosophically elaborated in different ways. Probably not the time to you and Chomsky that we are not born with a total and the city, but with the precondition of the precondition for the circumstances and preconditions, all of our brains, all of us, normal person, are preconditioned for learning for example, language. But it is true, it is true, that we don't bring slow into a world of people. We don't be confronted with the judgment. Of it or, or, or others, we will not develop all the capacity for our brain. Maybe you know about world children. I do not mean what you said. I mean the children who were born really in India, in the, in the great forest, who were really, really brought up by groups that are so children, and they were less than seven years old, they could learn still a language that was later. After seven years old, they could not anymore learn the language because the condition is just a condition. It's, uh, the, your brain is not something empty, but, not, but something must be written for in order to be able, for example, to learn from the language. And the war is leads to something very 
die wir uns auf der Erlöse von der Wünsche oder der Anstrengung, dass ich, there is no music around, there is no such a thing with a so-called contemplation as Peter or the Peter, as music, no one will become a Mozart. And if there is no modern science out there, then no one will become a Pierre Einstein. So, so in the world outside, in the so-called social art, we need a six to do that are under preconditions, but certain genetic preconditions to develop. That is, you need the preconditions both of the genetic priority and of the social environment, besides the always present preconditions, and what of that is necessary for human persons to survive in a society. The preconditions of these are really bad in every infant at the time of birth. So every infant at the time of birth, if slow in the world, if slow in the world of fever or social difficult, a world of prejudices, you see that the little boy was brought up by the milk of a wolf, was not slow in the world of prejudices. You need to be slow in the world of prejudices to, in, in order to, to develop certain uh, certain preconditions also to reject these prejudices, otherwise you cannot reject them. What do you find in this world of that? You will find first and foremost that people speak ordinary language and they don't want to talk to you. They don't want their people to talk to you. And among them, they keep talk to you, they, they also tell you what to do and what to do the wrong thing. That is, already in the language, in the language use, and in the Wittgenstein speaks about the language use. In the language use, you are confronted with something which is not necessarily a matter of language, but a matter of norms and rules of the world in which you work through. That is permitted, that is unpermitted. But this is not in the language. The language expresses. You should do that. You, you, you will be punished if you do it. This is right and this is wrong. So the language already expresses something which is not the language. It is the norms and rules of a world in which you are drawn. I speak about norms and rules because they are different. What are the rules? Then you break a rule and you know always more that a rule is complete. For example, I don't know whether you know the soccer. There is a world championship. Now, then you know what a foil is. And it, it is. it is a rule that if there is a foil, you have to get a penalty. And if you if you impeach a rule, everyone knows that you impeach a rule and what kind of penalty you are getting because you impeach the rule. That's a simple thing. That's a simple thing. You apply and the norm is a little bit different because the norm can be interpreted. The norms are generally very general, and especially the moral norms, as people the moral norms are later, they will be general, and you have to apply it to a complete situation. The more complicated the society is, and later when I speak about it, the more you have to apply. Uh, not only your own in a complex situation. But now I start to the simplest possible thing, then you are basically the only rules and norms uh, just clear as if they were rules. It's a very simple situation. You get with the word, that is, you get with the word uh, the so called uh, values of orientation. That is, you have to orient yourself. You are a little, you want. You have to orient yourself in the world, which is your environment or your How do you orient yourself in the world? You have to, there are so called the values of world orientation. The, the values are, as everyone knows them, but only you have not confronted this problem yet. What is right or what is wrong? What is good? What is evil? What is beautiful? What is ugly? What is pleasant? Unpleasant, but is useful, but is harmful, and what is rich, 
Uh, yeah, the promises of success and bad promises fail. But with this oriented factors, everyone is there. And the Bertrand Russell and other philosophers, I don't want to mention too many philosophers for you, because we have really good opinions. We do not need to memorize them. I just don't want, uh, I don't want to uh, speak about it without mentioning a person for, for whom for whom it was a major thing. That is right for us, so, but basically we have a yes feeling and a no feeling, and that the, our environment, that our environment, it presents us. There should we have a yes feeling, and which occasion should we have a no feeling, about which act we should have a yes feeling, and about which act we should have a no feeling. That's right for us, so, that we will speak about simple things, of good or good or right and wrong. No. This everyone has to distinguish you are born into a bird. You need to know what is right and what is wrong in this world. What is considered right and wrong in this world. Right is always what conforms the norms and the rules of the real world in which you are born. That is right and is always what conforms the norms and the rules of the particular world. In which you are born into. This is true even in the tradition of family living today. The child is a good child if he's an Olympian child, is that? But if he does, what is what in his work supposed to be the right thing to do? And even nowadays, sometimes <coughs> the child is uh, called a good child, and the called a child does the right thing, then the child is obedient. And we will he or she is told to do that. And he or she does it, then he or she does the right thing in knowledge of uh, this distinction. And if he infringes his rules, if he does something which is not considered to be right in this world, considered to be wrong, then the bad child needs to be punished and does sanctions. Dependent, different than something from the people who are going to different levels of something. If you do something which is wrong, you do not need a uh, uh, legal penalty for that, because sanctions can be solved, the sanctions do not need a penalty. You know, everyone has confronted among you already, even now, even in our present modern world, with social sanctions, whether they are not simultaneously also legal sanctions. They don't talk to you, you better don't to talk to you. They don't give you a present for Christmas anymore. You cannot go to the kitchen. So these are social sanctions. Every child, not this basically, not just children confronted with social sanctions. All the adults are confronted with social sanctions. But I know that it's not necessary legal. It can have legal sanctions when there, when there is a legal system which is relatively independent from the social system. But it's not always the case. So that is right and wrong. That is good and evil. But if it is something which is a moral negative thing, what is just disobedience and what is morally wrong is not necessarily distinguished from each other. Sometimes disobedience is called morally wrong. But we know that from early times onwards, this distinction has already existed. You know, I don't know the Bible. I don't remember what you read the Bible. No. Then you tell those who write the Bible for the very end, that other and evil sanctioned by God because they were disobedient. And they disobedient what God told them what they should do, and they didn't do what they were supposed to do with the uh, opposite of it, they had given a piece of wood uh, from the tree of knowledge. That, that was disobedience. That was disobedience. They were, they were uh, thrown out from the garden of Eden to the paradise because they were disobedient. But after they were thrown out, and God gave them the capacity to distinguish between good and evil. That is, when they were disobedient, they could not yet distinguish between good and evil. Only after they were expelled from paradise, to distinguish between good and evil. That's not the same thing. Not the same thing already at the beginning, at the beginning of this 
the so-called high cultures, uh, which were basically developing uh, roughly in the same time, some, uh, somehow, uh, then five, six thousand people passed and the first so-called civilization came into the Those are historians among the anthropologists know very well that about the first big civilization, that distinction between good and bad, and good and evil, and the leaders and disobedience were already done in the so called high civilization. Assyria, Babylon, um, in Adenovia, but Troiva, very, very ancient Greece, and uh, Judea, uh, and so these were the old civilization, and they were already made a distinction between. Between absent and complete norm, which was very important, the absent and complete norm, and that the social and moral, uh, uh, the, uh, different, uh, social and moral, they were differentiated, that of the individual, they were differentiated. Forget now, I already mentioned, this is good and evil, basically good expected from the environment, and the right expected from the environment. Useful and helpful, you also learn, but is useful from the environment. They told you what is useful. They tell you what is happening. They tell you which is the mushroom you should eat. Which is the mushroom should you should not pick you and going to die. The problem with the useful and harmful is that the section is ne not necessarily a social function. It can be sort of a natural function. A sanction. So if you get sick or you die from something, that this nature sanctioned you, not society sanctioned you. Or the society told you what you should do, what is useful for you, what is helpful for you. Um, now, all these are, in a dynamic sense, prejudices. And they can become prejudices also in a negative sense, later on, which I say. But you get also in the word the distinction between we and them. That is the distinction. Because we are the good ones, eh? no question about it. Oh, these are the good ones, our oh, ones are the right ones. We know what is useful, we know what is right. They, uh, that what we all know. And the others do not know. And the others are the wrong ones, they are the, the ugly ones, they are sometimes they are not humans, the other groups are not really humans. Some tribal names are great either people, anthropologists know that they basically the concept of man, human and the tribal movies and the artificial man. The other is excluded, the other is the enemy, the other must be rejected. And the protection of a self system of norms and rules against the others, a protection against the others, we and them. We and them can of course enter into the war. Uh, war is as old as humankind, war is as old as we are thrown into this world. The world is as old as the world, and it is still there with us. Although we sometimes believe that we will perfect your peace, but I very doubt very much that I will be ever perfect your peace. But as a matter, what is that? We and them is always distinct. We and them. And that is also from the beginning a so called division of labor. First and foremost, those who read Karl Marx's law act, the first division of labor between men and women, because different kinds of rules and norms apply for men, and different kinds of rules and things apply for women. That is, what is good for a man is not necessarily good for a woman, what is right in the case of a man is not necessarily right in the case of a woman, that is, the differentiation between the sexes is a difference, social differentiation. You can see from Simon de Beauvoir, you are seen from red, that is, women and men is not just a biological category, it's a social category. Because from the beginning on that, we don't know any society in which no different rules and norms will be have applied for males and females, also for children, also for children. Of course, it depends on the on growth of people when a child is is accepted as an adult, but male or other female, how they are found. It's people can or something that are elevating a person with the rules. So we spoke about the language, the language and the rules and law. See, the rules of sex, and this, that is what evidence, which is a 
they are for perfectly sense. Immediately, a child, a child wants to grab something. You have to ask, how do you grab something? How do you do it? How do you use it? The fashion is not human. I regard well, I guess the utensils of the God, the means should be used. You must know how, how to use a hammer. And that's a use a hammer. If you, if you use a hammer to buy uh, against the neighbor's hand, that's a different kind of use of the hammer. And the proper use of the hammer is to have nails, for example, I don't know. Uh, if you break the head of the other with the hammer, that's an uh, unwanted uh, uh, use of them, unless the, it's not a friend of the enemy, because that's also another proper use of the hammer. So all these things, you have to learn how to use these things. What do you use it? We are given you in the world. But the three things belong to each other. Because how do you know that you how to use the same? You know it from language because they can be because they can show you that <coughs> they that they can show you that you that if you believe in your meditation, you tell you how to use the meditation, how many times a day and how many things you have to take. As a simple language, and the doctor now doesn't need to tell you now this because we have that written language and now the doctor can tell you how many times a day you have to do it or that. But with the language that you do with the language, also good and evil as well. The vocabulary is not good and evil, but the purpose of language. At least you can show a person how to behave, how to tell a person how to behave, and that's why the three aspects I mentioned the use of objects, the use of uh, ordinary language, and the understanding of proper understanding of norms and rules. The vocabulary is of value and are related to each other. None of them is separate from the other. Obviously, there can be people who are born deaf, and they do not understand that there is no right. I think in ancient times it was very really difficult to introduce a person, a deaf person, into the understanding of words and rules. Now that there is no difficulty in this. Then there are certain problems, but if you got a healthy, healthy, Specimen of two species, yeah? And <coughs> from uh, the whole world. And especially, then there's no such a problem. We have all these capacities to do this thing. We spoke about meaning, and it's not going to cover that meaning, yeah? Tell me. Everything is a meaning. You know that meaning. You know that meaning. And you say, this is a good word, this is a bad word. You know absolutely what you mean when you say that you should not eat them. this mushroom because it's poisonous and it will be bad or it will be sick or something. You know exactly this, but the mean, every sentence has a mean. Yes. But there is something, if you have in a word, only mean in a sentence, only this, what I call object, you may have to simply just feel that object. Facing the S, the world of the, uh, they are facing the S, the world of the, they are human creations, all of a sudden, but human creations are facing the S, obviously, norms and rules are human creations, they are not for given, but they are facing every world as object, that's why we call them object creations, but we do not need to learn this term, so we do not have to talk, and maybe we will lose also in society. That is central central meaning. And the sense, the use of sense is also a meaning. A meaning. Right away then once basically we need that all we see have to speak a human language. Because they have a language and we do not understand their language. But that's a thing over did it with how the meaning is there. But there is only a meaning separate. Meaning a sentence, meaning the use of sense, but not meaning. Why do you need all of this? That is, why are you on this earth? What is the meaning of your very being? What is the meaning of your very existence? And this is the meaning of your life, of your existence, the meaning of your world itself. It's a different kind of meaning than the meaning of the sentence, the meaning of C. 
seen this this that we can afford very complicated good explanations. And these are good explanations. You that the parents tell you or the uh, chief can tell you this is a right. But the chief can you also explain you why is it right. So uh, you can you cannot have these rules and you need not have the legitimacy of these rules and rules. The legitimation of the rules and the legitimation of the categories of value and education, legitimation of right and wrong, mutually that in all societies and in the all societies we do not. There is a system of legitimation. But this should be so. Without this legitimation, you cannot say about the other, the other tribe or other nation or other family, but what they do is wrong and they have they have super suspicions and they are greedy or fancy. You could not say you could not say that barbarians and you did say. Uh, you cannot say that. Uh, without having a uh, category of bird explanation, that is, we have to let without having to let it in. No matter the bird explanation. There was a, a beautiful painting by Gauguin, perhaps you have seen this painting, about um, the Pacific Island, and uh, for the Pacific Island, uh, uh, the girls and the boys sit together and ask each other the following question. And that's the title of the paper. Where are you coming from? Not are you, where are you going? And this there is no human society where this question is not asked and answered. It's so not just that, uh, asked. Where are you coming from? The legitimacy of the world, and this is the word explanation. Use an answer to the question, where are you coming from? There are uh, no, no longer the so-called mood, so-called mood, once upon a time, once upon a time, before our time, before the time of the world, uh, there were God and there was a God and still, perhaps Kronos was his name, the God Kronos, who had children, but he had swallowed his children, because never wanted to learn to be born. But one child was rescued and then uh, awarded the kind of child, and this child was Zeus, and then with Zeus the world started at the beginning. At the beginning of the world, somehow there was a beginning, once upon a time there was a man who established the world, once upon a time there was a god, not only gods were established, spirits of that are established. Things, spirits of our ancestors, but we have to understand where they, they come from and where did they come from. He had they, he had they explains us who we are, who we are, because we inherit, we inherit the inheritance of our ancestors, the ancestors that uh, our parents, the spirit of our parents, great, great, great parents, parents are with us, still living around us, still watching what we are doing. Still uh, judging us, still uh, sanctioning us with sickness, etc., etc. So, where are we coming from? Where we are. And where are we going? These are the questions. And there is a so called word, uh, word interpretation, which gives an answer to these questions, with different answers to these questions. Now, uh, different anthropologists, anthropologists, students here uh, uh, speak about it. Uh, the different cultures give different answers to this question. Um, uh, Troy wrote uh, a very interesting book, but I will accept it from the book of the book that was the title of what Troy to He gives his own explanation about the, about, the, or about the original father and the children who worked at the restaurant. And so, yes, it's a personal need, you can have personal needs, of course. Person, but word explanation, but the general words and explanation are words which constitute words because words are not just constituted by, by the uh, norms and rules, but the constituted by the word explanation that it, it legitimizes this word, legitimizes the right of this word, 
and gives an original context in which a group of people can understand itself. But this is so called also in the first group, great civilizations. I mentioned to you a few examples of the first great civilization. I mentioned you uh, to and I, I refer to another third person here, Jan Asman, perhaps who know, you know them, because you know them, he Asman, because he was great, uh, I would say, not just anthropologist and cultural historian, who wrote a book about Egypt and uh, on cultural memory. So uh, he gives us two examples about the so called fundamental book, a book, a book which constitutes the people, but the people uh, uh, write the book or invents the book as first well its oral, what it is about, oral heritage, but the heritage constitutes the people. So as we said that Cornelius he has constituted the Greeks, there were no such a thing as Helens. The uh, in he constituted uh, the Helens, Helens he constituted the Hellenic people, that is the Greek people, there were, so, there were tribes, different kinds of tribes, but they had different traditions, they had different self understanding, but, but not for me, it was the poet of all of them, and this was constituted to have the people against the barbarian who were not, not, uh, not coming from the limits. That was the, the And the Bible constituted the Jewish people, of course, uh, the old, old Hebrews, the event of the Greek story, and that story. And the Jewish people was clearly constituted by the combination of the stories, which was basically the Jewish part, they constituted the people for different and different kinds of stories, obviously different kinds of people uh, from, uh, from the same stock or from different stocks, uh, uh, invented the stories, or, or spoke about the stories as a put together, and they constituted the people. So this is the the word explanation, the meaningful word explanation, which can constitute people. Now, the, the, uh, the beginning that uh, I let you ask questions, so I speak over the last five minutes, and then you can ask questions. Of course, I can read your contribution. I promise you have a more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, then I told you at the beginning the word uh, explanation, the word explanation, when the visitor is important for government, word explanation. Because this is when the, when the fusion of horizon can be a fusion of only a word explanation. You cannot fuse a horizon with a use of the hammer or a, a one single normal, one single rule, but with the whole single word explanation, you can fuse the horizons. You have, can understand what we meant by you see, what they meant, what did they mean, what they meant. That is the thing that we want to find out, and these are all the proper targets, but you have all of them, but you have still, they have had to say the word of storage to go out of their work. First, how about the argument and distinction between norms and rules uh, and different kind of, I would say, Orient categories of value. What is wrong and what is evil, and this from the beginning on the, the is a distinction between wrong and evil, and this a distinction uh, between custom and morality, and not a strong strict distinction, and, but a slightly important distinction, and which has a very important aspect uh, for the number of things which we uh, as moral sanctions. I said that we have sanctions are social, but the social sanctions can also be moral sanctions, and these can be more serious social sanctions and moral sanctions. And in the case of a moral sanction, we need to have an authority, a moral authority, because schools can sanction you moral or an authority can sanction you moral. But this first authority of moral sanction is the regard of the others, that is, a regard of the crime. They look at you, they look at you, and you are ashamed. That is shame. Put you into shame. That is a moral sanction. 
you're not put ashamed because you lose a hand in the wrong way. But there are certain acts, certain acts, and those acts when you include the right things and tell you what, but you see that there are two acts forced to moral sanction that you are put before the crime of the community, of the regard, of the eye of the community, and you are told that you are wrong, you are told that you are evil, and you are free ashamed. There is a natural uh, reaction to rush, to rush. That is the position as the answer to being put to show rush. You have to think you must run away or sink into the earth to disappear. So you disappear from the regard of the others. You are put to show. And this is a very uh, old, I would say, original moral authority which has no. With, uh, this, uh, have no desire. Till the present moment, you did no desire. But you are different than you are. Because what does it mean to be a shame? Why are they looking at you? Because you did something, it was something else, what you were supposed to do. Because you are different. Because you are different. And at the beginning, at the beginning, perhaps even now, different does not only mean that you are not. It can also mean you are better. If you get a distinction, a distinction, you can rush. You can feel ashamed. Then you put before the regard, the eye of the other. You can be ashamed because you are to disappear. Uh, disappear, you don't want to be seen because you are different from the other. You can be different also when you are better and you get a distinction. You are praised and then you are blamed. Then you are blamed. And and that because you are worse than others, because you, but in any case you are different. You must stay in the line. That is, you must live like the others. You must live like the other people. You must do what the others do, you are supposed to do, what the others do. This is what you do. You, you, you. Then you do something else that the others expect you. And you are put to shame. You can accept the regard of the other. Most of you do accept the regard of the other. But in case you do not accept the regard of the other, you need an other moral authority. But from this other moral authority, I'm not going to speak now because I promised you half an hour. But I tell you ahead that this other moral authority is called conscience, which has internal words. It is not the regard of the others. So now I finish to what I continue and I want to hear new questions and new contributions to the discussion. Yeah, please. Um, I want to know that question because it's what I hear you on the spot. Yeah? Thank you. 
But there's a little bit earlier that we can speak about it. There is a, 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 a kind of understanding of something. Then we reflect on it and we come back to this. Then we, we, if we change your understanding, but if we will not be anti negation. That is how we can set the response in the behavior. When the negation of negation, and we come back to the position in a, in a higher level, come back to this position. But it's also a precondition is a complex society. It's a complex world when you have the possibility of negation and returning to the original position. And that's not yet the case with which I was very from confession, but what we don't do. That's what I would do to concern. But I go back to government. I don't think that uh, understanding is indeed possible. I don't think but that's also a little bit too early, but the question is good. Understanding in my mind is not like We don't understand ourselves by that starting with this point. No other person can by us understand. For the simple reason, because, because you do not understand yourself, and the situation can be a great surprise, at least in modern times, but already in Socrates' times. Self-understanding was not possible anymore. And total understanding is totally impossible. But I so I think that I'm not as illusions about that. And this is a different kind of self. 
And this distinction between understanding, yeah, and into, uh, understanding and ignorance has to do also with the plurality of the person. Later on, later on, we come to this question. Please, other. Thank you, but I try to write it. You have to listen to this one. No. Ask me to change. Ah, that's it. That's that. Good. I guess. Because you are interested in that, but that's what we. I can see that social distinctions are so good to be very good. Okay, I can speak to it right now. Ah! Yes? Uh, so, uh, actually, I have uh, two questions, so maybe more, uh, some of them more relevant to your topic today, and some are just my thoughts about this topic yeah. in some previous time. So the first is uh, when we talked about uh, the morality, it's a really interesting question how this kind of understanding of uh, the, what is good, what is bad, what is evil, yeah, and what is, um, uh, so how it's uh, come to the new point when it becomes a law. So when you break the moral rule, you have some like, not a punishment, but some like, problems with the society, inside the society, but not uh, as a, uh, as a um, crime. And when you uh, break up the law, that means that you go to the jail, actually. And uh, that's different kind, but maybe you break the same uh, thing. So you just uh, break uh, what is wrong and what is good. So uh, do you think that uh, how this, uh, like, change, how this happened, how this moral things became a law? And can, for example, uh, the change in, in the, like, uh, some cultural things uh, change the law, or it goes other ways? So, I mean, this difference between the law and the morality. Uh, you need, of course, a legal system to speak about legal sanction. Mm -hmm. I spoke about the very original setting. Yeah. You are thrown into the world. I spoke only about the, uh, about the primary primary rules and norms which, which confront you when you are born into the world. Baby is not yet confronted with the legal system. And you, uh, you know many, many societies in which there is no legal system. Mm -hmm. Not even in Greece there was that really a legal system. Not even in Sparta there was a real legal system. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it takes time big, uh, to differentiation of the different kind of spheres the real differentiation of the spheres, all sociologists know it, according to Max Weber, is in modernity. And basically, all in modernity, basically from the times of the Renaissance, via enlightenment, mm -hmm. that the different spheres appear as spheres, aesthetic sphere, legal sphere, religious sphere, economic sphere, political sphere, and erotic sphere have been divided from each other. Mm -hmm. But that's a, basically, that's a modern thing. That's a modern mm -hmm. thing. You cannot speak about legal sphere, not even uh, in the Middle Ages can you speak about mm -hmm. legal sphere. But there are legal sanctions that mean people are executed. The heads are cut mm -hmm. because the king wants them, they uh, have to be cut. There are sometimes royal courts, you know, from uh, uh, perhaps from Shakespeare, that the royal court, at least in absolute monarchies, but not everywhere. Uh, who has the right of judge? The king has the right. The nobility, noble, they are the judges of the serfs and the servants. They, they do not need a court for this mm -hmm. matter. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, who knows Foucault? I know. <laughs> okay, this is very important. You know the legal system that it was about. Yeah. It is a modern thing. The legal system is a modern thing, as you mentioned. Of course, the legal sanctions are different from moral sanctions. The morally positive things we meet legal sanctions mm -hmm. very frequently. But imprisonment is new. Imprisonment is basically very modern because in ancient times, when there were legal sanctions, they cut your ear, they cut your nose, uh, perhaps you were, uh, you were hanged, mm -hmm. you were decapitated, mm -hmm. but about uh, imprisoning people, that's a very modern thing. Look at Foucault, discipline and punish. Mm -hmm. That is the system of prisons. That's a modern thing. And it's not the same way moral sanction, because uh, you can punish by law 
positive moral sense, at which are positive in the eye of many people, can be sanctioned and you can meet death penalty. Because of revolt, for example, mm -hmm. revolt against, uh, against a rule, against a tyrant, tyrannicide, for example, you need to be a tyrannicide will kill a tyrant. That's positive, a tyrannicide. Uh, and then you can be a sexual thing with that. Yeah? Uh, that's positive. Yeah? Those, those are Uh, I'm just curious, I mean, the explanation of understanding and abstract separations, but when we have, in the modern society, we have a theory of evolution as a cause and effect relationship that doesn't explain and give meaning to life and explains how we got here. Is that different than how we can live in a position where it comes from failure or something like that? Yeah, that is explanation of the thing, is Yeah. 
che ha confronto a Don Vito, lo so che è forte, è solo. È solo di me. If you are Germans, of course, the other are also Germans, and if you are living in some kind of Greek Romania, you know what it is. You believe that the ancient Greeks were perfect, they were wonderful, everything was great, and since the early city became decadent, and the Romans were far worse, and this is why I'm telling you that I was not German, but that's in the record. That is the idea that the Greeks were perfect. Because the Greek Socrates and Socrates and not not our Greek family, not our Aristotelians. They believe Aristotelians were sweet about Greeks who were awful, who were unfamiliar, who were stupid, who were bastard, who constantly lied and 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 the section of our our and not our Greek. Then you need a very useful focus about Socrates. That's a good thing because you know what a philosopher. And so this thing should be the transcendent kind of empirical level of philosophy. And with the transcendent power of Greeks were wonderful, other they were wonderful, and the empirical level was a very important question, and they cannot really understand what they have come with the empirical level to be used on the transcendent level because philosophers understand philosophy. To answer with the other gentleman, calling the notice of English philosopher and historian. He said the following, and that's about understanding. If I want to understand what was going in a person's mind, then the days of death, for example, when you see Caesar was horrific, I can understand. What was going in his mind. I cannot understand what he had. Because, because I cannot see what he had. I, 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 I thought can be understood, but I feel it can be fair. So that's the same thing about ancient Greeks. I can understand Socrates' argument. I can understand very well the opposite of argument. But I cannot understand what they had. I cannot feel what they had. That's why I cannot. Can never understand the problem. You have a thing to understand what you have. Then you work, for example, on several times that you were in love, for example. Sometimes it happens. And now you are not in love with the person whom you used to be in love. You can tell the story, I was in love with this and that, but you cannot feel the same what you felt when you were in love with this and that. You can see, you can understand what you did and what other did, but you cannot feel what you felt and what you cannot do with yourself. You can handle certain things. You believe that you are ancient, that you are ancient, and ancient people. It's it's all the question. And for other people's only understanding of the argument, you can always understand arguments. And but the argument you do not need to do not just. No horizon because there is no horizon in the argument. Argument is logic, logical. There are no different horizons and you are confronted with A is A and A is not B and not A is not A. What kind of horizon do you have? That's logical. And what logical is beyond horizons. But a current certain logic which is not the logic of a traditional logic, but a sort of different kind of Princess can be a god and a god can be a princess, okay? Now, this kind of problem can be a princess to lose a sword. You do not understand the logic because that's not the logic. You understand as a product of imagination. That's a difference. If you understand, this is a product of big imagination, it's not the product of my you don't feel the horizon if you understand something was the product of someone's imagination. The only thing. You know, all kinds of things. All kinds of things are sort of miracles. Of course, all miracles 
So first of all, when we talk about God, I think it's the object of the of gravity. And it's also it refers to the negative connotation of prejudice in the environment. So that my question is first. How do many people talk about lines and objects? What is also the like a general context? And um, or what is the origin of this objective in this case? And the second question is what do we gain when we call or when we think about this general concept of objectives like a definition of human nature? Why do we don't look at the team to say that is definition to have concept where the language people talk about? And on the other side we have this Prejudice, which is always negative, like the uh, prejudice in the environment. Very good question. Originally, the term very detailed, but when it comes to the very detailed, it can go to the very It meant basically you make a judgment, uh, a judgment about someone uh, before you uh, properly test it's a hypothesis. When you declare it's a hypothesis, and I would say something hypothetically and then I check whether my hypothesis is correct. It was like a lot of adaptive connotation, right? But it became negative with the family and life. Yeah? And we, we come to the first text, I come to God, it became problematic that we take granted things, take granted things without testing the things, testing the judgment. The first uh, next day that is tomorrow, I will speak about the first philosophy came with this idea. And philosophy, and basically Judaism came with the other idea that we should not take for granted that the others will be different. We can ask questions about what they consider to be our Israel, what they consider to be this world, or something else is something else is true. So, this is the first question that we take. Then we start to challenge the traditional norms and rules and to challenge the traditional exploration in the name of an alternative model group and alternative uh, world exploration. But that, that is the next step. But you cannot, never, and this is the point of the family, never challenge the world. Never challenge the world. You cannot do it. Of course, you can do it when you find a mother which each of us is something. You, of course, can reject many things like the other teacher. You can say that's not right, that's not true. In school, you learn to study. Or you can reject many things like the teacher tells you about the other teacher. Uh, but this is what you can say no to everything that the parents tell you. But not everything. Not everything is okay. Because if you negate every 
Let's see the next class. 